Shopping. Joining me right now is Arkansas Senator and author of the book, Only the Strong, Reversing the Left's Plot to Sabotage American Power. Tom Cotton is here. Senator, it's great to see you. Thanks so much for joining me. And I want to get you, your Mary. take on Joe Biden's Thank speech you. last night. Well, uh, Maria, maybe not democracy is on the ballot, but the Democrats are on the ballot. And that's what really worries Joe Biden is that he knows the American people are going to deliver a resounding verdict next week against. people are tired of it. That's why we're going to win a big victory on Tuesday. Well, how are you feeling about it? How many seats do you think the GOP can take in the Senate? Well, Maria, I don't want to hazard a guess on a specific number. Number, I'll leave that to the pundits. I'll just say we're going to win the House and the Senate, and it's going to be a comfortable majority in both. Well, look, I mean, it's not just economic policy that people are outraged by, but even foreign <clears throat> policy. So the U.S. is now working to remove Iran from the United Nations Commission on the Status of Women. Iran's supreme leader said yesterday that the United States should not be considered untouchable. Uh, talk to us about what's happening in Iran. We've seen the pictures of the courageous people, women on the streets. Uh, look at this shot, 120,000 people on the ground in Berlin, uh, basically uh, protesting the Supreme Leader. Is there a revolution underway right now in Iran? And we're not hearing anything about it from the Biden administration. Yeah, well, what began as a protest against mandatory headscarves for women has morphed into a widespread protest against the Ayatollahs themselves. We should be celebrating, championing, and supporting the brave men and women of Iran. You don't see Joe Biden doing that because Barack Obama didn't do it either. I write about this in Only the Strong. Iran's, the nuclear deal with Iran was about much more than just their nuclear program because, of course, it didn't start, stop that program. It actually supercharged it. It was about Barack Obama and the progressive left in America believing that we were to blame for our decades-long conflict with Iran. Barack Obama and now Joe Biden want us to atone for our supposed sins and pull in our horns and treat Iran like a normal nation. That's why Barack Obama stood on the sidelines when the Iranian people rose up to demand their rights in 2009. And that's why you see so little action right now from Joe Biden. What we should be doing is supporting those people, saying we'll never reenter that nuclear deal, we'll never grant sanctions relief to the Ayatollahs, and putting more pressure on their murderous regime. Yeah. Now, well, I want to talk more about your book. It just came out this week, Only the Strong, Reversing the Left's Plot to Sabotage American Power. I know you write about the service, uh, your service in Afghanistan and your experience watching Afghanistan fall. Uh, Senator, thank you for your service to this great country. Uh, and tell us what the botched withdrawal from Afghanistan meant for adversaries who are now on the march. Well, Maria, a Chinese communist propaganda outlet shortly after the botched withdrawal from Afghanistan referred to the Afghan effect. And unfortunately, I think our adversaries see an Afghan effect. You know, it's not a coincidence that Vladimir Putin began to marshal troops on Ukraine's border just a few weeks after we left Afghanistan. As I write in Only the Strong, it's much like our withdrawal from Vietnam in 1975 with those horrific pictures of people clinging to helicopters flying off our embassy in Saigon, for which Joe Biden bears some responsibility. As a young senator, he voted to cut off military aid to the South Vietnamese government. And that led to five years of Soviet communism rampaging around the world until Ronald Reagan was elected president. And I fear that as long as Joe Biden is president, we're going to be living with this Afghan effect because our enemies know that Joe Biden is not up to the job of protecting America's interests. Well, I mean, I want to get your take on uh, the strength of this country right now, Senator, because, uh, you know, you write in only the strong. Uh, about the Communist Party, but right now uh, their Navy, is it bigger than the U.S.'s Navy? What are we doing to offset the, you know, strength, continuing resources coming out of the Chinese Communist Party? Do you see this administration putting anything in place to stop the CCP's goal of overtaking the United States as the number one superpower? 
No, Maria. And as I explained, not only the strong, the decline that so many Americans sense is not an accident. It's not bad luck that's happening to Joe Biden. It is decline by design. It's because the progressive left is at best ambivalent about America. When was the last time you heard a Democrat stand up and unapologetically, unabashedly celebrate and defend America and our history and our role in the world going forward in the future? That's why they undermine the sources of our power like a strong military. Like birds flying south for the winter, Democrats always cut the defense budget when they get into office. They also have a very tenuous relationship with our military, and that's why they use it for politically correct social engineering projects. While the China are building the largest Navy in the world. Too many Democrats in Congress are worried about whether drill sergeants are using the right pronouns for our troops. Well, that's right. And frankly, as an American citizen, I'd like to see more acknowledgement uh, that we need to toughen up. And uh, I'm wondering if the GOP majority, uh, whether in the Senate or the House after the midterms, can change anything in terms of defense spending, in terms of waking us up. Frankly, I don't want to hear about the Defense Department talking about transgenderism, talking about you know, these social issues. I want to hear about readiness. Yeah, Maria, help is on the way for our military once we win next week. We were able to increase Joe Biden's woefully inadequate defense budget last year. I think we'll be able to add a little bit more this year. It's still inadequate in no small part because of Joe Biden's runaway inflation. But next year will be a horse of a different color. A lot of what we need for America and what we need for allies like Taiwan are relatively straightforward manufacturing challenges, you know, missiles and rockets and so forth. These are not aircraft carriers or submarines that take years to build with enough money committed to make sure that our great defense companies and our workers like uh, those in the Camden Industrial Park in South Arkansas to know that they can run more lines, that they can add more lines to their factories. We can build up the munition stockpiles that we need here in America and that also allies like Taiwan need to buy from us. Yeah, I mean, at this point, there are contracts in place that Taiwan was supposed to get armaments, but we haven't sent them. Is that right? What's the holdup in terms of sending Taiwan what we've already agreed to send? Well, I think, I think there's two main points. One, it, one is mechanical, one is political. The mechanical point is that it's just hard to manufacture the number of we weapons that we need on our manufacturing lines right now because there hasn't been enough demand. They haven't had the certainty to add more workers, more shifts, even okay. more lines. Yeah. With that long-term certainty, they will. But then there's the political will as well that I think Joe Biden's administration is constantly fearful of provoking Xi Jinping when we should be making Xi Jinping worried about what the United States is going to do to protect our interests, yeah. not the other way. Around. And I believe Anthony Blinken just got a, uh, you know, a, another uh, basically talking down to him from the Chinese Communist Party just this week. Um, we, we continue to see weakness on the world stage, unfortunately. Senator, we're going to be watching. Thanks very much for being here this morning. Uh, we so appreciate it and congrats on the book. Thank you, Maria.